Hi, the other day I discovered that my crosscut sled, which I had made out of cheap plywood, had warped. I needed a new one in a hurry for a couple of projects and I didn't have a chance to go get some more supplies. So I made it out of what I had on hand, which was primarily some jarrow or hardwood for the um, fences and the runners, melamine for the base and uh, some MDF for these inserts. Now this design is not mine, it's based on Joe Love, the, one of the admins on the Reddit sub, the woodworking subreddit on Reddit and Eagle Woodworking, Eagle Lake Woodworking, I think, uh, original design of the Super Slate. The main difference with mine is that instead of, compared to Joe's, is that instead of uh, having two layers, I've just recessed uh, the inserts into the melon. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this way, but it was interesting to play with, and as I said, it's what I had on hand, so if I had an opportunity to get different materials, I may not have done it this way. What makes this crosscut sled worthy of its super sled moniker is the ability to add accessories via these T-tracks that are built into it. For example, I've got this uh, miter fence, which I can set to the end of quite easily, uses an additional fence, whatever. Or if you look at Eagle Lake Woodworking, they've added to their super sled uh, a tenoning jig and a few other accessories. Joe's variation on this sled adds the uh, replaceable insert. So I can change out this insert for a wider one for a dado stack or for a 45 degree angle, whatever, you know, tilting the blade. That way you've got a zero clearance plate all the time and you don't have to rebuild your entire sled. You just have to replace the insert whenever it gets chewed up. My saw has a left tilting arbor, which means that wider blades such as a dado stack go to the right. The max uh, blade or well, dado stack width is, on this saw stop is 20 mil. So I'm gonna measure 20 mil. And to the left, I need to account for the blade being able to be tilted, just a regular blade, uh, which will add about four mil that way. So that gives us the reference point for where the blade is gonna be in this crosscut slate. So we know where we can attach the zero clearance inserts when it's all said and done. So on either side of that, I'm gonna draw out, uh, let's say, 25 mil, so another inch. Uh, and that's where the screws for the insert will sit. And the rest of the layout is all relative to these two lines. So uh, whatever I'm doing on this side, just imagine it's being done on the other side as well, so we don't have to sit through it twice. Now the first uh, T-track uh, sits 75 mil or about three inches. Um, off the edge. And the next one sits 190 from that. They both start 60 mil from the uh, user side of the crosscut sled. And 160 mil uh, from the back of the crosscut sled, so the back fence that you don't put your hands near. Before we get started routing, we need to drill part holes for the router bit. So this is a 12.5 mil bit. I'm using a half inch router bit so that'll work. Now comes time for the second operation for each of these channels. Uh, you need to switch to a small bit, I'm using a quarter inch bit, which requires me to use a small pole. Uh, so without moving the guide at all, we need to then route down the middle of the channel we've just created, and this one goes all the way through. Mm -hmm. 
Next up is making the runners for the sled. Uh, and I'm going to use this piece of blackwood. It's roughly the dimensions or the thickness, it's a little bit over of the runners. So I'm going to cut them in the table saw down to just over 19mm. Uh, so this is a 3 quarter or 19mm track by I think it's 10mm deep. So I've cut, cut it on the table saw and take the thickness that to get down to uh, the final line. The runners in the slots and the base on the table saw with the fence set to 500mm. I've now drawn a couple of lines to indicate where the runners go underneath. I'm going to attach these with screws. Some people will use glue for this step but as I don't have any contact cement or any glues that work with melamine, uh, screws will suffice. Now make sure we don't split the hardwood driller. Uh, I'm going to install these by hand. And we want to make sure these are just underneath the surface so that they're not going to uh, affect any registration or flatness of the work pieces once we're using the sled. Now I can repeat that on both sides. I'm probably going to attach four or five screws on each side so that the uh, runners don't go anywhere. This is the first bit of missing footage. Here I'm starting to cut out a groove for the MDF inserts to sit in. Unfortunately my camera battery went flat so I can't show slowly moving the fence over to cut the entire groove. I got to hit record on marking out the fences, but I just picked a shape and height that felt comfortable to me. I made sure to leave plenty of meat in the middle so that when blades cut through I don't have to worry about the fence separating. As you can see I've got the front fence, that is the fence that uh, you don't push, uh, attached to the sled upside down on my workbench. This is going to allow me to drive some screws in from underneath. Now, this part of the sled doesn't have to be super accurate, so if it's out, it doesn't really matter because you don't use this uh, back fence to reference any of your material off. The alignment of the front fence does matter, and we have to align that so it's square with the blade. To do that, the easiest way is to first cut the curve. I'll go you know, three quarters of the way, maybe two more than that, uh, but not all the way through, and then we can attach the fence accurately. With that curve-line cut, I've got two rulers, one's quite thin, one's a bit thicker, that fit into that slot pretty perfectly, which means I can run a square, an old square, um, up against that surface and that piece of fence. To start off with, I'm going to counter, I'm going to drill and counter sink in a screw at one end, and that means I can then pivot the other end uh, to get the line correct. After finding my largest framing square, I placed it up against the rulers in the kerf and then moved the fence until it was square with them. I then clamped the fence down, double checked the square, drilled, countersunk and screwed the fence down. After yet another check that everything was square, I could drive more countersunk screws into the fence. As you can see, I've got the uh, sacrificial inserts held in with countersunk screws and I'm just putting the last one in. Now, uh, it's a good idea to do this by hand rather than uh, with a drill just so it doesn't pull it down too much and you can get the exact tension that you need. And all of these screws are just below the surface and they're well and truly out of the way of the saw blade. Now with that all in, it's time to make the first cut. Next up is making the uh, fences for the mitre slots. 
Now this, as you can see, will let me cut a mitre of 45 degrees or whatever other angle I want um, quite easily. And that's adjustable and I can lock it down with these wing nuts. Eventually I'll get some star knobs to put those on, to put on those, but uh, for now they work quite well. If you don't have a fence, you know, when you're building them in the first place, I just used a speed square up against my fence, held it like that, and then cut what I needed. Now this doesn't have to be a perfect diamond point, whatever you want to call it, uh, but it is there so that we can get closer into the back fence here. Now we have to drill a quarter inch or six mil pilot holes for the uh, router for the slot where the screws will go. In. I realised my router was set just below the surface of the fence and I thought I hit stop on the camera. Turns out I didn't and so when I hit start again to resume recording after adjusting, I stopped recording. So you'll just have to use your imagination. And to these minor fences, that's really all there is to it. Um, so I've got a quarter inch bolt which I've ground the sides flat. You can just use a T. A bolt specifically meant for T-tracks. I'll do the same job. My original sled was cheap and very quick to make, took about an afternoon and made entirely out of very low grade plywood. This fence, this sled sorry, took a lot longer to make but I'm glad I put the extra effort in. The extra features I think will really come in handy uh, and I've already used the uh, minor fence a few times. While it is a lot heavier, um, this hasn't really stopped me from using it. It's a little bit more awkward to put onto the table saw and take off again but other than that it's no real difference. The melamine is very slick, so it slides quite nicely across the table saw. If you check below, there are Joe Labs plans for making, well, his version of this sled and links to Eagle Lab Woodworking's Super Sled video series. Uh, I won't put plans for this because, as I said, it was more out of necessity than something I'd planned to do. Thanks for watching.